Hi, and welcome back to our Thermal Fluids Book Club. And, and, and now, after getting a little bit of sense of, of thermodynamics, and now we now know what a temperature is, we've talked about entropy, a little bit of pressure, and, and uh, equations of state, we now know things like work and heat, uh, it, it's time to add in one last little bit. So, so far, if you really look at what we've done in terms of you know, thermodynamics, if, we've, if you will, we have done conservation of mass, and then we've done conservation of energy. And you know, we, we've talked about sort of entropy as well. It's, uh, not conserve, but just you know, the idea of uh, this energy equation had, had heat, and how do we come up with the idea of, of uh, I'll put sort of dot, 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 dot under here as you know, equilibrium process. And so it's actually time to come and add one more into these. And so we'll spend actually the next few episodes in the world of fluid mechanics to come in and take care of this sort of missing one, which is conservation of momentum. And it's important to, it's important to kind of do it all at once because you're actually going to see that you know, things like control volume analysis that we are doing in, in say thermo, thermodynamics purely is the same thing we're doing in fluid mechanics. You're just doing it, you're probably doing a little bit more conservation of momentum in fluid mechanics to figure out uh, forces and friction in, in a fluid system, whereas in, in a thermodynamic system, you're sort of simplifying everything and just doing conservation of mass and energy. And so I find this a, a valuable point to sort of get this last piece in because they're so related, right? In fact, if, if you just take thermo and then sort of you step into a class in fluid mechanics, the first thing they're going to kind of do is effectively to try and undo a little bit of what you learned in thermo because you have to understand a little bit of these fluid flows. Like all of these thermodynamic systems are cycles and, and fluids are coming in and out and all of this different stuff. So it's important to understand just the, the basics of fluid mechanics. And so that's where we're going to go. I'm going to give you the basics of fluid mechanics. And then we'll, we'll actually up your math a bit by sort of popping to one quick chapter in graduate fluid mechanics before going back into the world of thermodynamics and kind of completing out our thermodynamics side of things. So. Within the conservation of momentum, um, we'll, we'll really kind of get into what that means here in a second. But but first off, this just starts off at as fluid, you know, in a pipe, say, is is not perfect, right? Um, if I were to draw some sort of profile in here, it would be slower at the edges near the pipe because of viscosity. Things are slowing down and it would be faster in the middle. Now, it's a continuum. So step one, this is a, a continuum. And what do I mean by that? Well, if you go back to when we were talking about statistical mechanics and it's all of these molecules bouncing around and, and it gets to like 10 to 23rd, 10 to 26, actually at some point, it's actually just really simplified to say, no, um, this is a continuum that the molecules of gas or the molecules of liquid are bouncing around so much that I can consider at any point, any infinitesimal point inside this pipe, I can say there is a density. At that point, there is a velocity at that point, there is a pressure at that point, there is a temperature at that point, and of course now we know entropy. So that these are and these are continuously defined. And so the way we would write that is say density as a function of x, y, and z is continuous. Now, if you're a mathematician, I would add some mathematical words and things like that. I, I don't think we have to go into that uh, mathematical rigor yet of what what does continuum mean? It just, this would be plenty enough for us for the moment. Um, but I already kind of screwed up one thing here, right? Because, well, I said V for velocity. Well, nope, that's a velocity vector, okay? And that you actually have velocity as three different components. You have a, an X velocity and a Y velocity and a Z velocity. Now, standard no nomenclature that you're gonna see me use, um, I'll try to use V with an arrow uh, I'm actually going to switch over here into more of the graduate student version of this, but for, for now, this means a velocity vector. I'll, I'll try to put a little tail on here to, for you to understand it's V versus I will try to keep U um, in reference to thermodynamics with the one following exception. Uh, if I'm ever writing, um, say, the X velocity, Y velocity, and Z velocity, this is usually the nomenclature we use. So this would be the x velocity, 
y velocity, and then z velocity. Now, um, mathematicians are really good about only using one symbol, <laughs> and, and they have these whole arrays of symbols and they quickly get into Greek letters. Uh, engineers, we usually don't. Uh, you've already seen me sort of mix back and forth between U for internal, internal energy and E for internal energy. Sometimes E means the total energy, which would be the internal energy and the kinetic energy. So you, you do have to pay attention to, to context. Uh, even within a textbook, you, you may see a lot of, um, I'll, I'll say, inconsistencies. This is this is normal in the wor world of engineering. Uh, it's actually the point The point of it is communication. And so hopefully, if, as long as the author is being able to communicate to you what this is, it's okay. It's kind of back to my little uh, aside on units. And so um, the other version that you're going to see this written down is, uh, we may see that this is U1, U2, and U3. And as directions, X, Y, Z is really just one, two, three, uh, because we're, we're, we're going to get to a point to where um, eventually we don't care about coordinates. We're actually trying to do this coordinate free and, and you'll see where that can come in. Um, of course, if you get to polar and spherical coordinates, some of this can get pretty, pretty nasty. I won't necessarily dive into that now, but just be aware some of the stuff that, you know, as you're going through the book, right, dear reader, as you're going through the book, make sure you're doing those problems. There are some very interesting situations that, that show up. Um, and clearly, if this is a pipe, um, I really should be talking about this as an axial velocity, and that might be okay. And then there's sort of a radial direction and a theta direction that would make a lot more sense. So, you know, the, the work is there for you to go kind of do the homework. Um, and then a lot of times within this velocity, and I'll switch to green, we're going to talk about some sort of surface. I'll try and draw a surface here. And on this little surface element, uh, and the surface could be just a, a cut through the middle of the fluid here. Just a, a surface doesn't mean like a, a boundary of the fluid. Just I have some surface. It doesn't even have to be like a plane. It could just be a surface. And in the surface, I'm going to have some d area, some infinitesimal part of an area, and we're going to refer to the normal vector. And normally usually puts a hat on top of it to usually mean it's a, a of length one. Normal vector coming out of that. And a lot of times you may see this written as just dA with a vector, which you can think of it as the infinitesimal unit dA along that normal out of the, of the direction of the fluid. Okay, and that's important because you know when we when we think about an infinitesimal chunk of fluid, and I'm going to draw it as a, a box. Um, to be clear, it doesn't have to be a box. We'll just we'll just kind of stick to Cartesian for the moment to to kind of get your comfort levels up. But if I have a box here, a cube, really, this infinitesimal cube of fluid, well, this cube could be feeling all, feeling all sorts of forces on it at any given moment. Um, yeah, there's, yeah, there's gravity. There may be pressure pushing it in one direction. But fluid motion within this could actually be twisting and tumbling all the way across. It could be happening in a pipe. Think of Oh, how crazy a river is going. And so at any given moment, you're going to talk about on each one of these surfaces, usually we would say sigma xx is a stress on the x surface and the x direction. And so I'm sort of going to imply here that there's a coordinate system somewhere sitting up here like this. And then uh, to keep this as a right hand rule, we'll put z in that direction. Okay. Um, and then this would be the stress on the x face in the um, y direction. I know I drew it down. Sorry. Probably should have drawn it up. And then you can think of the stress in the x face in the z direction. So each one of these faces are going to have stresses. And so you end up at any, again, any point in an inf infinitesimal cube, you will have a stress tensor. Now, um, we usually use sigma for the normals and tau for the for the sort of shears, if you will. That's standard convention. And so the stress tensor, you would say on the x face and x direction. Uh, sorry, that's a tau. Uh, stress on tau face in the y direction, on the x face in the z direction. Tau on the y face in the x direction. This is now normal. Y y. And then this is tau on the y face in the z direction. 
stress on the z face and x direction stress on the z face and the y direction and then and then back to a sigma so stress on the z face and the z direction so this is our stress tensor okay and i'm going to put it t i j uh, where i can be one two or three i'm going to start working you towards this einstein notation so if this is one one that would represent here if it's one two that would represent here and so this is the stress tensor and uh, it's, it is symmetric with another four. And really the idea, uh, you have to understand viscosity as a model. I'm going to show you some, some cool videos here in a second. But we understand viscosity in this following form, sort of the easiest way to do it. There's some cool experiments. So imagine you have a wall here, and this is also a wall. But the important part about this top wall is it is being pulled in a direction V, such that the fluid like this. Now there's a sort of a the molecule right next to the wall is basically stuck to the wall th through forces and all that stuff. And so the stress here, the fluid, is proportional to the, and we'll say, we'll de declare this sort of the x direction, if you will, and the y direction. And so this would be the gradient of the x velocity in the y direction, and it's proportional. And so it's sort of linear, and this is where we would get viscosity. So this is, this is, there are ways how people measure viscosity. Um, and there are sometimes flows that are this basic. A lot of times the flows are so complicated. Again, think back to um, a river and a crazy chaotic river. And then, you know, we might end up talking about flows over airfoils and things like that and turbulence and all these, all these different things. It can get really, really, really complicated. And so that's actually why I like, I like sort of starting this portion of fluid mechanics. Um, and, and you have seen tensors before in your mathematics. And so we'll, we'll be able to do a little bit of these manipulations here over the next couple of episodes. But I actually just want to um, take a little bit of time and show you kind of fun, some fun stuff in fluid mechanics uh, of why we're doing this. Um, and the other fun one... I'll draw it quickly because we'll sh I'll show you a video. The other fun one, uh, let's see, I'll bury it over here in the corner, um, is surface tension. And so if I have a, uh, a small capillary tube, I could have surface tension, um, depending which way. It's a hydrophilic versus um, hydrophoric. And so you could have surface tension in a capillary tube that actually would... Um, Pull, pull fluids up. Some of this is what happens in trees, but this is all based on surface tension, and, and water has a, a good, good high surface tension. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll talk more about that later in a second, but I want to show you some fun videos. Okay? So the first one, this is actually a video uh, on what we would call laminar flow. So this is a flow that's sort of driven here only by these sort of very simple uh, gradients and velocity. A uh, laminar, you know, nothing is twisting and turning. And so I want to watch... Watch what happens here in the video. I'm talking about viscosity. And so, it's a cool experiment. Red. It's glycerin. They're going to put different colors. Red. So, red dye. Three different colors. Now, we're going to put in corn syrup dyed green. So now blue corn syrup going here in the corner. Okay. Uh, and now watch what happens as they slowly stir this system. That's corn syrup, and you're going to see these colors spread. And they're going to count to, um, I think it's 10, something like that. I, I, it's been a while since I've watched this video. But you and I would look at this and be like, oh, you're just mixing, you're just completely mixing the three dye colors. And we would expect um, that this is just a mixing process. 
but you're going to see here in a second that it's not. What you're actually witnessing is a fully laminar flow. What's happening is the velocity is only doing this. And so now they're unwinding this process. Here it comes. And it's done. So a laminar flow is actually fully reversible. Okay, so that was a really cool video. The next one I'm going to show you is actually kind of this capillary forces. So uh, capillary forces is a part of how trees draw water sort of up. And it, it's basically on the surface tension. And so what should happen is these thin needles hit each one of these uh, liquids. Right, it just sucks it right up. Um, and let's do the surface tension. So again, this happens a lot in, in plants. Um, it actually sets the, based on the surface tension of water and local gravity actually sets uh, effectively the, the highest that trees can get. That's why you don't see, um, I mean, some trees get pretty big, don't get me wrong, but it's, you don't see this uh, trees that can be like, you know, 100 times the existing of the size of a tree. That was pretty cool. Um, oh, and then this didn't load well. Okay, back and loaded. Uh, this is actually a picture of what can happen as you go to higher and higher speeds. So there's a non-dimensional parameter called the Reynolds number that I'll write up here, which is looking at uh, the density of the flow, velocity, some sort of length scale. In this case, it would be like the diameter of the sphere divided by viscosity. And we'll get into, you know, how non-dimensional numbers are, are derived. But basically, as you keep ramping up the flow speed around the sphere, you go from um, something that is very, uh, very, very viscous. And so this is the flow. Next one down here is you start seeing a little bit of recirculation bubble. And then one of the more fun things, you get this thing called come home, uh, the von Kármán vortex streak. And so you, you have these sort of eddies that are shedding off of it. And then you get to, you still see a couple eddies, but it's getting a little harder to tell. There, there are a lot more of them, a lot different sizes. And then you sort of get to this kind of pure um, kind of chaos behind it. Now, if you're a golf player, what happens, this kind of looks like a golf ball, right? Uh, what actually happens here is that if you take a look at this one on the bottom left uh, and you see where it separates, you will actually have a lot more drag because you're getting separation here and so you have all of the drag, all of the fluid and the air kind of hitting the front and then a big wake in the back. So there's actually a big pressure gradient against your ball. And so the whole point between dimples on the golf ball is actually to uh, transition it to be a bit more turbulent and so that it looks a lot more like the one on the right without having to drive the Reynolds number. So there's really cool fun things in fluid physics that we'll get into. Uh, so we see you next time as we then kind of We've talked a little bit just about the basics of fluid mechanics. We'll kind of come back and finish out this momentum equation. And so then you're going to be fully armed with conservation of mass, conservation of momentum, conservation of energy, and we know the concepts of what does equilibrium look like. So we'll see you next time. Uh, don't forget, if, if, you're, if you're enjoying these, these talks, these book reviews, please like and subscribe. See you.